One of the greatest boxers of all time, Manny Pacquiao, gets upset on Saturday night by your Dennis Ugas. Pacquiao was a minus 400 favorite. It was the first title defense for Ugas as he retains the WBA welterweight title, winning via unanimous decision. R. Brian Campbell scoring the fight in favor of Ugas 116-112. It was Pacquiao's first fight in more than two years, and when the 42-year-old was asked if he would fight again, he said he was unsure. Manny Pacquiao gets upset. Let's welcome in CBS Sport combat analyst and co-host of Morning Combat, Brian Campbell. Your Dennis Ugas defeats Manny Pacquiao via unanimous decision as he makes his first title defense, retains the WBA welterweight title. BC, you scored this fight in favor of Ugas, 116-112. What's your reaction to how this fight played out as Ugas upsets Pacquiao? You know, I think narrative-wise, you take a little bit of all of the above of the potential. How and why did this happen? Did the two-year layoff help Manny Pacquiao? Not at all. Did the fact that he's 42 years old play a role in this fight? It certainly did. But your, your Dennis Ugas didn't win this fight because Manny Pacquiao is 42 years old. Pacquiao came out hot, but it was Ugas' ability to adjust, to show top-level defense, but to be able to stand essentially right in front of Pacquiao at close range and play chess with him. Have a quicker counter to Pacquiao's jab, go to the body creatively, throw looping right hands up top. What you eventually saw was in the second half of this fight, Ugas continued to step up his pressure and a fading, frustrating Manny Pacquiao. I said ahead of this fight that if Pacquiao's a step slow, there is an opening there for Ugas to win. But Ugas was going to have to raise his output and essentially be better than we've ever seen before. At 35 years old, the former Cuban Olympic bronze medalist did just that. This is the breakout performance of Udenis Ugas' career. He earned this victory, and I think most importantly for the fans around the world here, the judges got it right. I don't know if I'm saying for Manny Pacquiao that the end should be now, but you can't take off two years at this age and take on an opponent on 11 days' notice and expect to be at your very best. Well, two of the judges scored it the same way you did, 116-112, which is why I gave you the nickname Brian the Judge Campbell. Um, when you look, about, look at how this fight played out, right, you said this fight would go the distance. It, in fact, did go the distance. Do you think that impacted Pacquiao, that it was in terms of he couldn't keep up with the younger, perhaps more athletic Ugas as it did go the distance? It, it was certainly that part of it. You saw Pacquiao start to fade, but I don't think so much it was a stamina dump. I don't think so much, again, it was age, although he did talk about his legs, his calves feeling uh, feeling tight, feeling old, which is certainly part of age. This is where we have to give Ugas that full credit with what I'm talking about here in this narrative. He disarmed Manny Pacquiao, and there's a difference in that regard. There's a mental fatigue that can come upon a fighter when frustration ensues. Manny Pacquiao had plans, ideas, adjustments to be able to make in there in the first half of the fight which I scored it evenly three rounds apiece I thought Pacquiao had ebbs and flows moments where he made those adjustments but once Ugas made the final one once he realized he was going to be able to stay at distance because he can counter Manny's jab and once he realized his defense could be sound enough where even if Manny came in with flurries he wasn't going to land any of them clean. And I think as long as Ugas kept his output up, which was something I said ahead of this fight, you weren't going to confuse the judges who maybe didn't appreciate what Ugas was doing and wanted to overscore Pacquiao's aggression. In this case, because Ugas lowered Pacquiao's output, it became a chess match. And this is where Ugas was uh, you know, one move ahead this whole night. Do you think it had any impact, the fact that he was supposed to fight Errol Spence Jr.? and then has to fight Ugas. Do you think that changed uh, his, his approach, his, his mindset as he went into this fight? No question about it. Look, let, let's be honest here. What do, what do I love to celebrate? Fighters that dare to be great, that take on tough challenges. Manny Pacquiao agreeing to fight Errol Spence Jr. in the first place is daring to be great. Taking on an opponent who offers you less commercially in Ugas and who is maybe not as difficult, but very difficult. That's daring to be great, too. We celebrate that. But with risk, or with high reward, so to speak, you do get the high risk. Manny Pacquiao had many elements to this fight, again, including the 25-month layoff heading in. 
that weren't what you would want in this situation. Playing a little bit, let's say, with house money at the end of his career. We didn't expect him to come back in 2019 as a 40-year-old and make a run at fighter of the year. Take the WBA title from Keith Thurman and get back into the top 10 pound for pound. Maybe this was a case of Pacquiao just sort of hoping that everything would fall in line if he kept making the best decisions for the fans in this case and for business. He kept the train on the track, so to speak, and we got a fun fight on Saturday night. We can thank him for that. But this was not the smartest positioning because Zugas was a sneaky good fighter. And if you give him the opening to have, let's say, the best performance of his career, he had the skills to at least have a chance to do that. That's what Ugas did. We've never seen him fight this crisp, this aggressive, and this perfect. And for Pacquiao, nothing really seemed to go his way after those first few rounds. He turns 43 in December. Was it the last time we saw Manny Pacquiao? What's next for the Pac-Man? It's tough because a lot of that may end up being dictated by Pacquiao's political hopes, which is talked about after the fight. Pacquiao, a, a senator in his native Philippines. The election for president, though, is next year. And there's been so many rumors Pacquiao would not confirm either way that he will announce. He says by next month he will announce for or for not if he will run for the presidency. That could be key because his trainer, Hall of Famer Freddie Roach, he believes Pacquiao's final goal is to win a fight as president. Now, look, there's levels to this game. Should or could Manny Pacquiao come back against a softer opponent? Of course. Manny Pacquiao at the elite level, though, I think he showed you in the first half of this fight. Physically, he still got it. But to be able to have that same physicality in the second half of the fight, you need to be active. If Pacquiao wants to fight the elite, he's going to have to be fighting two, three times a year, I believe, to stay at this level. Maybe we'll see him again. I think most likely we would because of his love for this game. But I think there was a savor the flavor element to this fight week. This may have been the last time we see Pacquiao certainly entering as the betting favorite in, let's say, the biggest fight of the summer. He showed his part. But his part wasn't good enough. It was your Dennis Ugas' night. He gets upset, but still, Manny Pacquiao, an eight-division world champion. No boxer in history has won world titles in more weight classes. Brian Campbell, bring it down for us here on CBS Sports HQ. BC, thanks. And for all things combat, check out Morning Combat with Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell. You can watch the series on YouTube. You can also listen to the podcast on Apple and Spotify. Morning Combat, download and subscribe today.